That is no longer starting June 30th. The Wisconsin State Legislature will end both course options and youth options. And now we have two separate ones. One's called Early College Credit Program. I will not tell you on this because it's kind of confusing, but early, early college credit program is for students grades 9 through 12, and, and that's if they want to go to a UW system or take a class, okay? Um, course requests through this program must meet local high school graduation requirements and must not be offered through the school district. So that's why we keep adding AP dual credit classes because then we can tell the student we already have the class here, so we're not going to allow you to do that. I shared with Kevin and, and Matt about 30 minutes ago that we added dual credit psychology and sociology, for example. We have 139 students that are taking that next year, those two classes. The average cost for those two classes with the books is $677. And so we're saving a district. If these kids wanted to go to NTC to take that class, we couldn't tell them no. And it would cost us $94,000 to do it. So by providing those courses that we know kids like to take, we have them at school here instead to save the school district money. So that's the early college credit program. Um, the other one is called the Start College Now program. And that's for juniors and seniors not through all high schoolers, it's for juniors and seniors, and that's for seniors and juniors who want to go to the Wisconsin Technical College System, which if you look, that is the five students that signed up are all NTC. So that's where they want to go. None of them are selecting the UW system because a lot of those classes, a lot of the classes that we have already, that's why they stay in our school and they take our classes instead. Um, so you can see that's the cost for the Start College Now program. Um, and just so you're also aware, so let's say my son wanted to take all these courses. He can only take a maximum of 18 credits total for both of them. And you can't have a student say, okay, I'll take 37 college courses. I'll graduate from college before I do that. Are there any questions on this? So if you have a student that's a freshman or sophomore wanting to take some of the University of UW class and then decides as a junior or senior is going to the tech school. Yep. So he can he or she can do either one. Okay. And a lot of times what happens now are the tech credits transfer over to the UW credits and vice versa. Okay. But like I stated before, we're really proud of the work we do with NTC, and they asked me to go to a national conference and speak on what we do at Mozambique because we do a phenomenal job of saving our kids' money here. They approved the expenditure for the Start College Now application for 2018-19 school year. Let's give a motion by Tom Peck, seconded by Gorman. Further discussion from the board? What happened just technically if you had like a sophomore who's going to have enough credit to, to two years to graduate? Would you still be able to take those? Yeah, if they want to take these classes and have us pay for them, they need to stay at our high school. But if they graduate early, they're not going to. Anything else from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10 is the Curriculum and Standards Committee meeting report. We have the report from the March 2018 meeting. Great. Um, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you. Um, our March meeting, um, really the um, minutes you have in front of you, and most of the agenda items that were covered in the meeting are also action items. So we will start with B. Yeah, can we but that? we can just go through and... They're, they're, they're in summary for you in the link, but they're really um, all action items. So and since they're on the agenda, if we can just move through them, that will give you a summary and our action at the same time. So uh, the first one under B is the approval of some textbook adoptions uh, that went along with some new courses that you approved earlier this year. So all the links, um, the process for our, our district through is through the Curriculum and Standards Committee. 
um, there is when a new textbook adoption is requested from a department from a teacher based on a course that we currently have or a new course that we've added, um, there are some rubrics that are um, aligned with our NAOLA policy about um, all the criteria that we look for in a new textbook. And the uh, rubrics that are created are for each department. So there is one for English. They vary slightly in the criteria based on content area, but many of the criteria among them about bias and readability and things that we look for in textbooks, obviously, um, to meet student needs are similar <coughs> in many of the, the rubrics across the content areas. So the policy is that a committee is formed along with the teacher requesting in there within the department and the, the, the committee meets together, goes through various samples of, of textbooks if that is an option, and then writes them. So that's kind of the, the way, as, you, as some of you know who have been through this, uh, we had three new courses um, and with AP courses, sometimes there is a required course through AP College Board that the teacher has to use based on the criteria set forth to have it be uh, deemed an AP class. Same with dual credit when we offer those, especially with NTC. Sometimes they offer uh, a choice between two texts, and sometimes it is a required text in order for it to count as a dual credit class. So we have three uh, different texts in front of you. Um, that were recommended for our Leadership Development class by Tom McCarty, our AP Music class taught by Kirk Campbell, and Anna Kaiser is teaching our Written Com class, which is a dual credit. Um, and the texts were there, they went through the rubrics, and uh, the recommended texts are in front of you. So we're looking to the committee um, recommended that these texts come to the full board for approval. So making for a motion for Adam Tenby. I'll make a motion to approve Adam Tenby. Second. So we have a motion by Barnes, seconded by Kramer, to approve the textbook as outlined. Further discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Aye. 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 Great. The next one is really a, a revision and enhancement of our gifted and talented program. Uh, the comprehensive plan is, is linked into your board agenda packets. Um, and basically the the uh, rationale and purpose behind the revisions and enhancements created for our gifted and talented program um, were really to be more aligned with best practices. We had a, um, a quality program um, that involved services for students who are identified as gifted and talented. Um, and it was based on um, a single assessment criteria for students to be deemed eligible to receive services and program delivery in some way, shape, or form. So we, we hired a new uh, STEM coordinator, GT coordinator, Sean Butala, this year, who is a highly motivated individual, along with some revisions that our middle school principal, Josh Sweeney, was already thinking about in terms of ways to integrate um, differentiated instruction into our core curriculum classes, as well as extensions for our GT students. Um, we also collaborated with our school psychologist, Kelsey Ortel, um, who in many, as part of best practice, school psychologists are often involved in the identification GT process so that we can give a parent a very comprehensive view of how their child um, is portraying themselves academically and ability-wise. So basically the enhancement is um, you will see a, a greater um, revision of parent communication. You will see an enhancement to the criteria and the description of that criteria, including ability testing as well as academic and learner behaviors. And then you will see um, a process, a very clear process, um, for how that student and that parent are communicated with about their eligibility to meet the criteria or not and then options um, from there on about services and delivery. So uh, the committee took a look at the policy plan. Sean and Josh were there to uh, talk, and Kelsey were in our committee. And the committee recommended that um, the new plan come forth for approval to the full board. So we'll probably have less kids identified as gifted and talented with additional criteria that really helps identify kids that truly are gifted and talented. That is one of the potential benefits of the programming is that you identify kids who are truly gifted and talented and be able to provide them with the services that they actually need. 
Can I, can I respond to that? Sure, absolutely. I was uh, present during Sean's presentation, and one of the key takeaways I got, not only on the assessments and how objective they were, uh, I got the impression that Sean was like to also manage the program, making sure that you know, the, the fine path that is stated as such is what they follow. So that was also the takeaway I got from that. So I would make a motion that we, we approve the gifted and talented program as stated. Second. Second. So a motion by Field, seconded by Barnes. Further discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D then is discussion and possible decision on the rever revision to graduation policy to include financial literacy credit. Great. Uh, earlier this fall, earlier this year, the board, you heard that the new financial literacy standards were um, put into effect requiring that um, all districts in the state of Wisconsin um, align their um, curriculum and their content uh, with the financial literacy standards uh, set forth in our Wisconsin model, model academic standards. Um, as a result of that, we've been doing some um, investigating and looking at um, our, our standards alignment. And out of a result of that, one of the results of that was that um, the committee take, is taking a look at um, adding a graduation requirement of a 0.5 elective financial literacy class or a 1.0, 0.5 is a semester long, 1.0 means a year long class, uh, financial algebra class that would embed the 0.5 financial literacy standards into a year long math class called the financial algebra. Uh, this would not increase the number of graduation credits that we are requiring as part of the Mosley School District at 22 credits, although it would add a requirement that students prior to graduation would um, need to either take the 0.5 elective class, financial literacy class, or the 1.0 financial algebra class. And the policies in front of you linked in. Um, I don't know. Dr. Schultz or Nate has anything to add to that? No, but Diane, um, you brought up a really good thing though about this is this is going to have to be reading one. Do you know what I mean? If we make this change to the graduation requirements, that this would have to be the first reading, and then the policy would have to come back. Right. Motion to approve the first reading of the graduation requirements. I'll second. A motion by Tom Chick, seconded by Guy Wiss, to approve the first reading of the revision to the graduation policy to include financial literacy credit. Further discussion from the board? No, I'll just say, as a parent that's had a kid take this class this year, there is no more, no class that has more potential for reward with our kids as a whole than this class, figuring out how to save money, how to spend money, and the risk associated with it. So I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item E then is the approval of extended field trip requests. Yes, we had three. They are presented there in front of you. Two by Katie Morass, our art teacher. One by Matt Lindsay, a high school teacher. If you have questions about them, we certainly can entertain any questions. But uh, the committee recommended, um, based on the information presented in the request, that we bring you to the full board for approval. Motion approved. Oh. <laughs> 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 Motion by Tom Check, seconded by Barnes, to approve the extended field trip request as presented. Further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries as well. Thank you. Move on to item number 11, which is the building committee meeting report. The building committee met earlier this evening. Uh, we heard from Mr. Kaiser about the progress of the energy efficient projects. All of the uh, parts of the energy efficient, efficiency projects are under contract and about to progress. Uh, the science room committee met and continues to work on making sure that our science room addition is uh, going to be what it needs to be and that will be going to bid soon. Uh, uh, of course, they have a lot of ongoing facility issues that they're going to address over spring break. Uh, along with that, all that was in the packet. The MCAA Sports Complex, a meeting was held this morning at uh, Mosley Cafe, uh, and a discussion ensued on how to spend the $90,000 in grants received by that group to develop the sports complex. 
and uh, it was decided to go for, get some bids and some information to go forward to address and complete the two football fields. This summer we do not have the uh, availability of the National Guard. They have commitments elsewhere. They are committed to coming back uh, again, though, as their schedule allows. What's our general core in energy efficiency and science group projects? Uh, Nexus. State? Or not. I'm sorry. For the science? Science department. Science is blue design. Cold. Yeah, Blue Design is an architect at this point in time. There's been no general selected. Okay. They've had some general ideas for bidding what that's going to run. But that will go out to the street here uh, probably the first week of April. Okay. And then it'll be on for a couple weeks' bid. So we'll see all generals that will come in on that. Okay. A question, Corey. So the $90,000 that they have to progress on the football fields, are they just going to, are we going to be hiring someone to do the work that, that the National Guard? Yes, would normally do just to get those out of the way. Exactly. So not only that, but they have money available, but their the youth football has money that they're going to bring forward. Thanks, Corey. Next item is item 12, personnel committee meeting report. We met at 6.30. The first two items I'm going to lump together. The committee met and made the decision to approve the director of food service to approve the grades four through eight reading specialist to approve the high school mathematics teacher hire and approve the elementary 4K teacher hire. All four of those were approved as presented. So I'd make the motion that we move forward as a full board and approve the hiring of those four people. I'll second it. So the motion and a second further discussion from the board. Um, Nancy, so you, months ago we talked about the motions. Are you going to approve any of the dollar amounts in these when they uh, We approve. It's all outlined okay. as part of the decision. Right. So uh, I'm not going to speak specifically to each dollar amount, right. but it's part of the approval. Got it. Okay. As outlined. Okay. Cool. Anything else from the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There were no approvals needed of additional resignations, retirees, or hires. There were new, no new extracurricular hires that the board needed to be updated on. We also had a general discussion as a committee on exit interviews and class sizes. I believe that information was shared. So if there's any questions from the board, we can answer those questions. Otherwise, uh, that was it from our committee. So if there's no further questions, we'll move on to item 13, which is the Finance Committee meeting report. Okay, uh, this evening the Finance Committee, we have the voucher cookie. Approval of uh, six hundred and thirty-three thousand five hundred and forty point fifty-eight. Uh, I would so move. Oh, sir. We have a roll call vote. Kaiser. Yes. Pro Kramer. Yes. Theo. Yes. Tom Check. Yes. Zebro. Yes. Alice. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Hewis. Yes. Gorman. Yes, all yes. The reason it was so uh, such a small amount was that it was a uh, week, week less than the uh, month. Okay, um, under um, the Mosley Treasurer's report for a month ending February 28th, dated March 6, 2018, uh, I would so move. I'm sorry. That would be also. <coughs> Paul Kramer? Yes. Theo? Yes. Tom Check? Yes. Zebro? Yes. Alice? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Hewis? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Kaiser? Yes. All yes. That could be explained. Thank you. Item number 14 is other reports. Wasby report, correspondence in upcoming meetings. Okay. And that would be me. And there is a and, and this does happen every year, but, but we probably would be awesome if we have any board members coming. There's a new board member gathering, and that's at Marathon at the Mosley, I mean Marathon High School. And then there also is some workshops, and those are and put in there, and I have this too. So any information or any need on the web, or you can ask me. And 14B is the CC9 correspondence and report from the monthly meetings. Uh, it was in your appeal. Yep. You can all read it. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> item number 15 is future agenda items. Anything from the board? Yeah, I know last time we had the Facebook perception report, but I know I wonder if we talked about trying to get it out to some of the people that didn't answer last time. Are we, can we look at that? Or, or, and I guess you guys have a question for you. How can we address some of the, like the needs you, in the... You approved a staff survey, not a community. Not the community. Yeah. The state, how do we get them? We talked about trying to get better answers. Oh, staff. Yeah. Oh, probably do it on a staff meeting. Okay. okay. And, I mean, and I can I'll, talk I'll, with. I can speak to that a little better at my staff meeting on Monday. I just touched on when the survey is potentially coming out and the importance of it. And okay. I had my support staff and my my teacher staff there and talked to them about the anonymity of the the questions itself and that. We don't even get to see the actual comments that come back. You know, they it, it's all controlled. So yep. I'm trying to get them to understand that, that the feedback is really great and we're not gonna know where it came from. So right. pushing it that way. Right, because we had that, that once the one group that was not really represented as yeah. much this year as it was the previous year and they were, they were it was our assistant staff. Yeah, exactly. So how we can get to some of those. People. So I guess that. If we, if we offered it during a meeting, because you you do yeah. all have assistant yeah. meetings. Yep. The balance you just strike on that is what Josh talked about, though. The question I get asked a lot on it is, is it anonymous? How do they? You know, that's the piece that people want. And there's maybe a little hesitancy because if it's happening at school at a meeting, it it truly is. You know, but. Um, you know, if you're going to host it at, at school, people definitely want that assurance that it's an anonymous survey. So if anyone has any agenda items they'd like to see on the next board meeting agenda, can we just hope this Mark? For full, full hours. Full hours. hours. People come and going. I don't know if there's a way we can buy. Should we make that part of our safety report, part of that agenda item? That sounds like a good idea. Sharon, okay. most of the... Anything else regarding future agenda? All right. We have a motion from Top Check, seconded by Barnes, for adjourning. Further discussion from the board? Bring that all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed?